Supersonic travel gets ever closer to reality. Boom! The supersonic company is celebrating the construction of its Overture Super Factory in North Carolina. The production floor, once ready, the company says it will be able to build 33 aircraft per year. They've already flown a demonstration model of this. Now, of course, they have to build something approaching the real thing. The Overture will fly at twice the speed of today's airliners. Boom says it's already 130 orders and pre-orders. Uh, interestingly, you know, you, major airlines, United, American, JAL, all have bought or have put down orders for this plane. Um, Blake Schoen is the CEO of Boom and is with me now. Right now, sir, this is the, the, before we get to Boom, let's just talk about Boeing because when the story obviously today is Boeing's mayor culpa on, uh, on Capitol Hill, but you're about to go into aircraft manufacturer. When you look at what's happened with Boeing, highly successful, highly profitable, highly uh, a leader in the field, an innovator, what lessons do you take from this? Well, safety is job number one. Safety culture is the most important thing in actually achieving safety. And what we've seen at Boeing is just really sad. They had a great safety culture and they lost it. And once you lose it, it's really hard to get back, ferociously difficult. And, you know, frankly, that's one of the reasons at Boom why we built a human piloted airplane as our very first demonstrator, because we wanted to build the foundation of our safety culture. And it continues to be our top focus. And, you know, the world is just not well served by the Boeing Airbus duopoly. That's the other point. I think it's time for there to be a new major aircraft manufacturer. So where are you on your engines? Oh, they're coming along great. So we uh, we actually are having our first combustor tests on the engines this week, and we're going to have our first engine up and running on a test cell in about 18 months. And of course, that's the Symphony engine. It's our own design. It's the first supersonic engine designed for efficient, sustainable supersonic fleet, uh, supersonic flight, and uh, that's what's going to be powering the Overture airliner. I notice it's going to run on SAF. Good luck buying that. Well, the future uh, flight needs to be not just faster, more affordable, but it does need to be sustainable. And today, yeah, we do not have enough SAF. And you know, Boom is one of the many companies that is looking to make investments in SAF and help us scale that because high density liquid fuels is really the only way we can decarbonize long haul aviation. And so SAF, you know, between now and 2050, that is the solution. So when do you, what's your target date for maiden flight? Well, we had our maiden flight on the XB1 prototype actually March of this year. Uh, oh. First time there's a, a, big a one. new super in the air since Concorde. And when are we ready for passengers? We're looking for our maiden flight and on the order of about four years from now in 2028. 2028. Now you've got 130 orders and one imagines, or at least uh, as you get closer, there, there will be more orders and pre-orders. And what... Give me a feel for the level of interest from airlines. We know United, American, and JAL are with you already. But we saw that, look, any of us who are students of history, we've seen this before with, with we saw it with Concorde, we've seen it with other planes, we saw it with, with Airbus and the 380. The, the, the interest is there, but it can often dissipate. In my mind, I think it all actually goes back to passengers. And you know, I don't know a single passenger that wouldn't love to crisscross oceans in half time it takes today. And the key is delivering that in a way that is affordable to enough passengers, which of course that was the big challenge with Concorde, a technological marvel, but it was so expensive to operate, people couldn't afford to fly on it. And so what we've set out to do with Overture is to build an airplane that's profitable at a business class fare. You know, ultimately we wanted to get it to everybody in economy, but we're starting out all business class. And if we deliver that, I don't think there's a single international airline in the world that's not going to want to have this because guess what? All their passengers want to have it. Nobody wants you to succeed more than me, as, as you and I have talked uh, before. But, and, and maybe it's the cynicism or not the skepticism of the journalist in me. I just see so many production difficulties as you actually make a full scale, real live model of over, I mean, a version of Overture, and then start going into certification. Is 2030, sorry, 2028, 2029, is that realistic? 
you know, there is no question what we've set out to do is really, really hard. And you know, lots of critics are going to have lots of questions. You know, I, I look back in the rearview mirror and I look at the quote unquote impossible things that we've already done. You know, we built and flew the first civil supersonic airplane since Concorde and the TU-144. We've gotten, as you said, you know, multiple airlines to put down non-refundable yep. deposits. We just built a factory. Do we have a lot left to do to get overture into the skies? We absolutely do. But I think the world needs this. I think the world needs a new aircraft manufacturer. Passengers deserve it. And we're doing this as fast as we can, but we're absolutely not skipping any steps. You've still got my seat reserved, I hope. Absolutely. You and I are sitting right next to each other, Richard. Good man. Well, that's the message across. Thank you, sir. Good luck. We'll follow every step of the way. We will follow it in great detail. I'm grateful for your time tonight. Thank you.